Want to watch football without the restrictions of blackouts or cable? Check out expressvpn.com to help you get access to all the live games. Sign up today using the link in the description to get three free months. Yo to Bolt fam, it's the director. Chargers fan, sit down, man. It's time to have a, a big boy talk with the Bolt fam. Maybe an uncomfortable sit, uh, conversation for some people. I get it. We all have our opinions about what should go down in the upcoming NFL draft. I'm of probably the same opinion as most of you guys. I want one of those blue chip prospects at wide receiver. I think it's definitely the move for us. However, rumor has it that Jim Harbaugh and his run-oriented, his offensive line-oriented, his protection-oriented uh, uh, mindset is going to go offensive line in the first round. This kind of rubs some people the wrong way. I get it. But the reason we're having this conversation is because we need to fully understand why this would be. Okay? And if it's still a good move for the Chargers going offensive line in round one, is it something that we're going to be able to wrap our heads around? If, you know, Commissioner goes up there and says, if number five, the Los Angeles Chargers take Joe Alt, should we revolt? Or should we understand what is being built in front of us? Because quite honestly, like everything we're hearing internally from the Chargers, you know, from talking heads in NFL media, the Bolts are, are highly likely to take an offensive lineman in the first round. I don't know if I'm completely sold on that idea. However, though, there, there is a lot of evidence uh, suggesting that, you know, Jim Harbaugh in the past has wanted to go for wide receivers like Julio Jones, who was swept just before them in that draft per this uh, tweet by Charlie. Um, there is a lot to consider here. But yes, the talk of the town right now is the Chargers going offensive line in the first round. Yes, we need wide receiver, but the offensive line thing has just been pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed. So we need to talk about a bolt, fam. What would the draft look like if the Chargers went offensive line in the first round? We're going to do our normal three mock, uh, three mock draft scenario here for you guys. And you guys can let me know what your thoughts are here, okay? Because there's, it, it's going to get interesting real quick. Before we do kick off, shout out to the sponsor, Underdog Fan. So use code DIRECTOR to match your first deposit up to $100. Get in on the action. It is a great way to support the channel. Have some fun along the way. Newcomers, take a look at this special on screen here. Let's go out there and get it. Before we do kick off, hit us up with a like and sub. If you do enjoy this Chargers content, the small amount of time you guys take to hit the like, sub, bell notification helps me out a lot. Let's get into it, baby. Lights, camera, action. The Chargers going offensive line in the first round. Here's your shakedown of what that could look like and, and, and why maybe it wouldn't be the end of the world. This is a Jim Harbaugh team, after all. You've seen Jim Harbaugh do very similar things everywhere he's gone. And honestly, you have to follow the success of this formula as well. The NFL has become such a pass happy oriented kind of offense in the league like it's it's pretty obvious you know what a lot of these systems are designed around their quarterback play super important wide receiver super important but ultimately just you know finding time to to make that passing attack as lethal as possible lots of defenses have had time to acclimate to this in the nfl i'll tell you what though there's not very many uh, defenses out there that are suited for what Jim Harbaugh has up his sleeves. A couple of different offenses kind of run what we're looking to look at or look like in 2024, and that's, you know, ground pound. A bit more balanced, I should say, than, you know, purely a running team. But, you know, teams like the Browns and the Ravens and, and you know, these guys that have a very prominent balance or a running attack, uh, these teams are really hard to defend because there's kind of no answer for them. And it all starts up front at that offensive line. Uh, Jim Harbaugh's bread and butter and as much as I, i'm pushing back on the idea because of course neighbors and, and harrison and adunze these are all like you know once in a lifetime kind of opportunities at wide receiver to pick up for the charge at, at number five i also have to understand that there is a winning formula here and Everywhere Jim Harbaugh has gone, he's had a little bit of pushback, not just from, you know, maybe the fans just a little bit, but more so the ownership because he has a certain way of doing things. But in the end, it's their job to let Jim Harbaugh do what he does best, and that's win football games, bring championships to these organizations, 
and us as fans, me and me included, guys, I'm, I'm completely lumped in there with you. We got to do the same thing. I would be a little disappointed if we went offensive line in the first round over a guy like Harris and Neighbors, etc. But it's also my job to trust in what we brought in in Jim Harbaugh. This is the man. This is the myth. This is the legend. He's got a way of doing things that wins football games. If this is his decision, I'm going to back it. I may be a little bit sour on not getting one of those blue chip wide receivers, but we got to trust in his formula. This is the kind of football team that wins championships. So with that, we're going to jump into some mock drafts, okay? Again, you guys know how this works. Three mock drafts, A, B, and C, where the number one rule is we have to take a tackle in the first round. That's that's the number one priority for this exercise. How can the Chargers fandom feel confident in a mock draft that starts off that way? Honestly, you might be shocked in what we find out here. We can still round out some very solid rosters, some very solid picks, uh, regardless of what happens in round one with the tackle. So let's, we're going to go five rounds deep. That's kind of where I feel comfortable with the prospects. Maybe next week we go six. Um, but for this one, let's go ahead and start things off. Round number one, mock draft A for you guys following along at home. Let's see how things shake out. So this is kind of what I think is going to happen. You can probably mix in Drake May or JJ McCarthy there at number three. I do feel like the Arizona Cardinals are going to take Marvin Harrison Jr. You know, I think a lot of us hoping that he slips to us at five, which at that point, I think you take him. You don't you don't freaking risk, you know, not being able to find another Marvin Harrison in the future. But this is kind of where I think I see things shaking out. And at this point, our first mock draft is going to reflect something that I think a lot of Chargers fans are looking for as a prerequisite if we're going to be going tackle in the first round. That's that we want to trade down. If, we, if we're going to go tackle, if we're going to build this Harbaugh team in the future, we need to get some value along the way. And of course, there is one team that would trade the farm for Drake May, who all of a sudden gets to throw to Justin Jefferson, right? To, to uh, all these weapons in, in Minnesota to be that guy of the future after the Kirk Cousins era has, has concluded. It's going to be the Minnesota Vikings. Shocker. We've talked about this a million times, but it's one that honestly, that's kind of what it would take for me to trade down from five. It's a huge position. Quarterback tax is going to be put into account here. We're going to get 11-23. Next season's round three, we'll say. I think you could easily say round one, depending on who you talk to. But I think round three, certainly that nice QB tax that we look for. And the Chargers will kick back number five. And they should be able to get their quarterback of the future. And at this point, we're looking at some value at tackle. Okay, so the Chargers, we're going to force this trade through. The Chargers get their two first-round picks, and this is kind of the route I would take. If I'm going tackle round one, it involves a trade down with the Minnesota Vikings. Funny enough, there was actually an article not too long ago, I think even yesterday, where they were talking that Jim Harbaugh is not going to do Minnesota any favors because he was, I think, rejected from that coaching opportunity a few years ago. Worked out great for the Chargers. But that may come into a fa into factor here if the Chargers want a little bit more for Minnesota. So who knows? That third could turn into a first. Either way, let's resume the draft where presumably the Vikings are going to take their quarterback. They take Drake May. I think that'd be a great fit for May, by the way. If it shakes out this way, I think May would be a superstar in Minnesota. Uh, which puts the Chargers at pick number 11. What are we going to do? Malik Neighbors would have been maybe one of the good like, Trade up, trade up. Let's get Neighbors still and have the you know other first round pick. In this instance, the Chargers still have some superior talent left on the board. Uh, Brock Bowers is still there. Uh, we've got, you know, Quinian Mitchell, Cooper DeGene, Leatulatu, which is somebody that the Chargers have been talking to a lot lately. In this instance, and it's going to break my heart because I let's pretend that Brock Bowers is in there, even if he is. I don't know. I, I think that he doesn't make it past the New York J uh, Jets, if I'm being honest. If he's there, it would be so hard for me to pass up on him, even if I'm, you know, the Chargers, you know, GM and, and all that. But... In this exercise, we got to take a tackle, okay? And in trading down, I think this is kind of the range that he's going to go in. And in terms of, like, the best fit for the Chargers, the best fit even for Fuanga, like, <laughs> this has got to be the pick, right? I do think that he'll be available uh, in, an, in the range of, of, like, 11 where we'd be trading down. There's a couple of guys that would be available. I think J.C. Latham would be there. I think Fuanga would be there. Uh, a couple of really awesome prospects for the Chargers to consider here. And I think just so happens that this is the range where Fuanga is going to go. The kind of situation where he would thrive. This dude, of course, he's not going to be Joe Alt, right? Joe Alt is the complete package. Whereas Fuanga, is, he's going to be a pretty decent pass protector. But my goodness, watch this man move human beings out of the way for his running back. A run game behind Fuanga would be very impressive. Some people only view him as a guard. I, I highly disagree 
especially when talking about what the Chargers like to do on their offensive line. Um, even outside the Chargers, I think this is a tackle, and I think he's going to be a very, very good tackle on the second level. Um, and one where, like, he fits what the Chargers want to do in terms of system, in terms of scheme. He's going to perform above almost everybody else in this draft class at what we want to do in terms of moving giant human beings to improve the run game. I think Fuwanga is an awesome target for the Chargers if we are going to go tackle in the first round, if we're determined to make that happen. I think this is my dude. I'm, I'm actually going to say I'm pretty firm on that. If we're getting value and if we're trading down, I'm grabbing Fuwanga at pick number 11 via the Vikings, and I'm actually feeling pretty good about it. Yes, it would suck to pass up on Brock Bowers. That's probably still the move I make if he's there, but if we're going tackle and Fuwanga's on the board, I, this would be as good as it gets in terms of we got the guy in the first round. We have another first round pick to work with. The Chargers offensive line's off to a very good start. It just seems like a match made in heaven. And you know what? Fuanga could actually play if you wanted to a little bit of guard in his first you know, season if we have Trey Pipkins out there. I don't know if I do that. I think you put him out at right tackle. Trey's all of a sudden your swing. Offensive line's looking pretty good. Um, here in round one again, and I'm glad we decided to go Fuanga. Uh, I pick 11 because I was thinking, oh, maybe we can go Brock Bowers and get a Marius Mims at 23 if we get lucky. He goes right before us to the Philadelphia Eagles. And quite honestly, Marius Mims to me, I think this is a top 15 guy. Um, of course, the injury is a little bit scary here, but Mims, he would be an awesome uh, 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 option if we can find some value on him. We'll talk more about him maybe later if we can find him later in the board. Um, concerning the Chargers number 23 pick here in the first round, we have some options, okay? Who are some of the receivers that went before us? Brian Thomas is not going to make it all the way down there. Uh, Malik Neighbors. Okay, so still some great wide receiver talent still on the board here. Um, Adone Mitchell, probably wide receiver one for the Chargers if selected here. McConkie's kind of a my guy in the draft. I do they say his ADP right now is at 35. I don't think he slips out of the first round. Roman Wilson would be an amazing slot guy for the Chargers. But who do we have in terms of value here at 23? We want to get value, 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 right? And there's some guys that shouldn't be here, right? Cooper DeGene would be an awesome fit with the Chargers. Some people think that he's overrated. I get it, okay? There, there could be some concern in his translation into the NFL. Some people view him as safety. Some people view him a corner. I personally view him as the hybrid, right? Play him anywhere. Let's get another Derwin James on this defense. He'll be awesome in the, in the slot and as, as a nickel guy. He's a huge playmaker from that position. Play him up high. Then you can move Velohi Gilman in the box where he's a physical dude, right? I think DeGene in this situation for the Chargers is a slam dunk. But then you got guys like Byron Murphy, right? You got guys like Nate Wiggins. Um, of course, Mitchell is probably the guy that like eight out of ten times I'm going to go with. But I'm looking for value. I don't know if he'll be here. He could be here. But I think my pick in this instance, it's got to be Byron Murphy, dude. Like, imagine what the charge... And we're talking about, like, impact, right? So the Chargers get an impact guy in the trenches on offense, followed by an impact guy in the trenches on defense. This feels Jim Harbaugh as hell. <laughs> if you're talking about bolting the hell up with Jim Harbaugh as your head coach... This is as Jim Harbaugh as it gets. Byron Murphy's going to be awesome. Do they have a shades of you on him? No. It's really fun for me to take a look at those. This is one of those freaks uh, at his position in this draft. He's going to be an awesome piece, a weapon on defense. It really sets the tone, you know, for the rest of the guys on that line for edge play. Imagine, dude, trying to stop Joey Bosa, Khalil Mack, Tuli, Tui Pelotu. Byron Murphy in the middle. Don't forget Morgan Fox. Like, it would be a nightmare to face the Chargers if your name is Patrick Mahomes. Okay? So, Byron Murphy for me, I know Mitchell's going to be tough for me. It's going to be tough. Like, he's like, he could be X receiver. He could be everything the Chargers are looking for at receiver. But this feels Harbaugh as hell. We're going to draft Byron Murphy here. He's a great value. And I always see, always see Johnny Newton there as well, who could be an awesome pick. I think one of those guys could end up being there at 23, which pushes the Chargers down to round two. Kool-Aid's got to be the pick if he's there. I've seen many mock drafts where he's still available at 37. Um, I don't see him available in the second round, if I'm being honest, okay? And again, I, I want to put a blend of reality versus versus value in here. Um, McKinstry, to me, 
is a late first rounder. Okay, and I honestly think that he's he's dipped a little bit too much in the past couple of months. Um, I don't I don't know if he'll be there. Zach Frazier would be very interesting, who I do think will be there. McConkey is fringe to me. I don't know if he'll be there. All right, but right now at this point where the Chargers have gone offensive line, defensive line, we need corners, we need wide receivers. Like there's no freaking tomorrow, and there are some options here. The question is. Who do the charge? What position do the Chargers need more? What what's the value that we're going to find more in some of these guys? I think if I'm being honest with you guys, Mike Sainer is still who's going to be available at 37. He's a he's a nickel corner, um, not going to be a, a huge fit with every defense in the league. But for, again, just like I said with Dejean, the Chargers in particular would make very good use of Sainer still, and he would be a year one impact uh, a cornerback, and he would be awesome. McConkey to me though. We need wide receivers so bad. We haven't done it yet. What do we do here, Bolt fam? Uh, the blend. The blend of reality versus value. I'm going to go ahead and say McKinstry and Lad McConkey are not here. Okay. I would say that Xavier Le uh, Leggett probably has a more uh, chance of being available to the Chargers than McConkey. But we're going to go a little bit more for realism in this first draft. Okay. We're going to go Mike Sane. We're still here. We're going to get our corner. It is. It kills me. It kills me to pass up on Bowers. It kills me to pass up on Sanders still, but we need to see what the floor looks like. All right. We need to see what this team would be um, at the very minimum if we decide to make these kind of decisions, right? I think we got a nice value in Byron Murphy. You could swap in Johnny Newton if you need to, to make yourself feel better in terms of realism. Um, we we're going to go with the realistic pick in round two. We're going to take Mike Sanders still. And honestly, he would be such a huge piece of this defense. Set and forget. Don't even worry about, you know, uh, uh, passing up on some of the guys that were still available on the board. Now in round three, again, I think it's very easy for me to say Keon Coleman would be my pick here. Some people hate the idea of that because he's slow. He got, ran a 4-6-1, did better at his pro day. Doesn't matter to some people. Um, I still think in terms of his talent at receiver just go watch his freaking highlight reel like this is a playmaker either way we're, we can't take him here i don't think he's going to be available in the third round if he is that's a kind of a slam dunk of a draft so far guys that i do think could be available in the third round um edrin's kind of like on the fringe there for me i think he's a second rounder junior colson could be viewed as a second rounder as well albeit late second rounder but i think there's a decent shot he makes it back to us at 69 and this is a position that I, I literally just talked about. We'll go impromptu back to the Twitter here. I literally just tweeted this this morning. Um, Junior Carlson's visiting with the Chargers. Some people say that he may not make it past us at 37. I think that the Chargers could still find him at 69. And I, I even backed it up by saying I think linebacker could end up being a sneaky priority for Harbaugh and Minter. If you take a look at the defenses that were built by Michigan and Baltimore, who we're kind of having shades of this year, linebacker is just an important piece of that defense. Take a look at what Baltimore does in terms of their investments in that position, right? They drafted Patrick Queen, couldn't keep him because of the money, which was ridiculous. But they also invested capital in Roquan Smith. I didn't know if I saw him going to the Ravens, but boom, there he goes, and he has a huge impact. Him and Kyle Hamilton rocked that division this last season, and I think the Chargers need a guy like that. Nothing against Dan Henley. I think he's going to be great. But I think Junior Coulson, who's been handcrafted for this defense, him and Mike Sane were still back at it again, this time with the Chargers. I think you're off to a fantastic start. Again, it's a mix of reality and value. We took the reality last draft or last pick. I'm going to go with a little bit of value here in Junior Coulson. And I feel friggin' amazing about this defense all of a sudden. Byron Murphy, Mike Sane were still, Junior Coulson, like... I don't know if it gets any better than that. The one thing, the one thing that's killing me right now is that because of that, we have pushed wide receivers so far down the board that I don't know what we're going to do. Okay, let's just take a look at the receiver position here. There's a couple of guys that I love. I think, honestly, these two dudes are going to overperform their ADP by a mile. I think Anais Smith, um, probably one of the best slot receivers in this draft he's absolutely fantastic he's got you know really nice moves um in terms of uh, his ability to to separate and you know change of direction acceleration is is, is above average etc cetera, etc cetera. this is this is awesome savviness and blocking while contributing to special teams like the dude really fits what you're looking for at receiver um outside of that there are some guys that catch my attention in terms of value um taj washington could be great luke mccaffrey could be great 
Um, Clark could be great. Anthony Gould's visited with the Chargers. Like, there's some some value guys to be found here, but we need a guy for Justin Herbert right away. There are some dudes that I would consider above him in terms of talent, but I think in terms of how big the need is and how good of a talent I think he's going to end up being, um, we're going to reach a little bit and take what I believe is still one of the best receivers on the board who could be a very nice impact piece for the Chargers. Because um, let's be honest, you mix this in with a really good run game. I think Anaya Smith is is as good as it gets at receiver. So it's, it's a little bit of a reach. Where are we? At pick 105, right? Um, but I think it's so big of a need, and he's such a good talent here that I feel good about it. And we have another pick coming up in just five picks. So let's go ahead and take Smith here as the Chargers' first wide receiver off the board. Um, next up here in round four, a couple of uh, different options. I was actually looking for, ooh, where did he end up going? Cedric Van Pran in the fourth round. I love selecting him there, uh, but he was already off the board. Bo Limmer to me is definitely not bad. Marshawn Lloyd would be very tempting here. I think he's an awesome fit with the Chargers. Cade Stover, I think, is an awesome fit here as well. In terms of value, Cole Bishop's awesome. Leonard Taylor's awesome. Uh, wherever he is, Ben Sinnott down here is awesome. I think in terms of what we've invested in so far, we went pretty heavy on the defense in the second and third round, right? In the first round as well with Byron Murphy. I think we need to look offense again. It's between Bo Limmer for me and Cade Stover. I think we're going to go Limmer here because center is certainly a hugely important part of this offense, in particular Justin Herbert. Um, we have a guy in there right now in Bradley Bozeman, but we need a guy... As a backup, we need a guy for the future. Bozeman's only here, I think, for, what, one year, two years? I think it's one season. Um, we need to get that under control right now. And Limmer's actually a very nice product. There's some pretty solid center prospects in the fourth, I think, through, like, six rounds. Um, and he's one of those last guys where I'm like, he's he's going to be a starter. Don't even worry about him. He'll be fine, especially with Jim Harbaugh, you know, and, and, and Greg Roman. He'll be great. He'll be good in the future. Um, and then finally, to round it out, round five here, where we missed on... We missed on Marshawn Lloyd. There's a couple of guys here that real. I'm huge on Braylon Allen. I'm probably one of the biggest Braylon Allen fans out there. I think Braylon Allen's going to be a fantastic player in the future. I want that constant punch you in the mouth running back. Um, and Gus Edward, uh, Edwards brings that as RB1. I think if you mix in Braylon Allen, there is a relentless battering ram of a running back smacking you in the face every single down. I love that. If I wanted a bit more variety, I'm definitely going Will Shipley here. But I'm going to take Braylon Allen here in the fifth round. That's He probably won't last that long, nor I don't think Shipley will. But you never know in terms of value. No, it's a combination of value and realism in these drafts. So here's mock draft A. And honestly, it may not be what we envisioned as Chargers fans, but boy, howdy, does this look like a Jim Harbaugh-led team, dude. Like, this is a Jim Harbaugh team. Lee Fuanga. Byron Murphy, Sainer still Colson from Michigan, Smith, Limmer, Allen, like this is the rock your socks off, Jim Harbaugh, Los Angeles Chargers. All right, mock draft B. We'll go a little bit faster here. Round, five rounds, we'll go a bit quick. If you guys like mock draft A, uh, you can rank them, you can tell me which one's your favorite in the comment section. Let me know. Let's go ahead and start mock draft B. Mock draft B, which again, Marvin Harrison's still on the board. We're going to do another trade here. I was thinking about doing the, the Joe Alt thing, but we still have quarterbacks on the board. Um, might be the case next draft too. Who knows? We're going to go ahead and do, in the first round, another trade down. But this time, we have to consider other uh, other angles, other options, other alleys here. Okay, Because who knows what's going to happen with the Minnesota Vikings. I think that's the most likely you could also consider a New York Giants trade up of one spot. I think they want to secure that quarterback if he's still available. I'm going to I'm going to swing a little bit for the fences here and do something we haven't seen yet. We're going to do a trade with the New Orleans Saints. Where are they? The New Orleans Saints are a sneaky quarterback needy team. Sure they got Derek Carr right now. I don't know if that's worked out the way that they've hoped so far. And I think they can start thinking about the future. Now, they don't have the draft capital that I love for a return in a trade down. I, I really would rather it be the Vikings. I think nine out of 10 times, that's probably what the Chargers are aiming for as well. But if we get an offer, and let's say the Vikings don't offer the Chargers this the trade that, they, that we want, and the Vikings offer us two first rounders, which is kind of minimum at this point, two second rounders, which kind of feels appropriate. Um, and honestly, with the QB tax, I could easily see like, this pick, 168, coming off the board, too. This is the kind of value that you're looking for. The Saints desperately need that quarterback of the future. J.J. McCarthy was selected. Jaden Daniels would be a massive piece for the New Orleans Saints. 
this kind of all makes sense in a, in a scenario basis kind of thing, okay? So the Chargers are going to trade down. Again, it's it's not really what I'm looking for in terms of a trade partner, but it could be one of those draft day shockers, right? I'm sure Saints fans would be going bonkers if they got Jaden Daniels at five, okay? So for, for the sake of a uh, little bit of variety, we're going to go trade down with the New Orleans Saints, who would be wise. They probably won't in this in, the, in this mock draft, but be wise to take Jaden Daniels. Why does it say trade again? Would be wise to take Jaden Daniels. Um, there we go. Uh, we'll see what they decide to do. Yep, they go Jaden Daniels and the Chargers. Instead of having a top like, you know, instead of having pick number eleven, we end up with pick number fourteen. And there's some guys that are off the board in front of us. Man, if the char if the Raiders got Michael Mayer and Brock Bowers. Find me a tall enough roof to jump off of because that would make me absolutely sick. Either way, some nice value here um, in round one. Now, Fuanga's still on the board. And I, I don't know if he makes it as far as 14. I think he could. That would be a very interesting scenario there. But again, we're trying to go for variety here. A mix of realism and value. Um, I don't know if he makes it to the Chargers at 14. Some guys that would still be available at tackle, though. Uh, you got J.C. Latham and Amarius Mims. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna zig again. I'm gonna zig again. Okay, the Chargers only have the one first round pick to work with. Keep that in mind. Okay, but there's there's a there's an opinion floating around, and it's one that I'm starting to really agree with. In the first round, if Fuanga, let's pretend he's not there for sake of variety, and, and we're picking a little bit lower. Honestly, guys, I'm very high on Amarius Mims. J.C. Latham to me. He's projected this high. He's out of Alabama. He's got good grades everywhere. Um, but notice his gap grade here. Maybe not the best guy in terms of what we're trying to, to find and fit for the Chargers offensive line, which is kind of crazy because the Chargers were working very closely with this guy This guy at his pro day. And he's one that they could be very high on, that they're like, oh, we don't worry about that too much. He's this great fit here. J.C. Latham, to me, if the Chargers feel confident in him, he could be a guy that really works out for us. He's, he's a great talent. Don't, don't get me wrong. Just because I'm a little bit shaky on him doesn't mean that, you know, he's not a great talent. But I think Amarius Mims, in terms of fit, in terms of ceiling, if we're being honest, because he hasn't had much playing time at right tackle. He shared some time with a, uh, a teammate two years ago. Last season, there was some injury concerns there are flags but i think mims in terms of ceiling could be like the perfect fit for jim harbaugh and he's a guy that in a trade down especially for talking a little bit high here i would say like top 15 top 20s is where i see him but this is a perfect situation for him yes the injury concerns are concerning but we don't have to force him in right away if we feel a little bit shaky on his availability we have Trey Pipkins out there. We can let Mims ease his way into the NFL and into, you know, his health. I think he's already fine. I think he'll be fine by training camp. But Mims is such a monster of a human being. 6'7", 340 pounds. The, the stats are probably not going to reflect it very well because of, of the availability last season. He's a right tackle. Um, trust me when I say he is one of the nastiest run blockers that you're going to find. Pass blocking maybe needs a little bit of work, but he's got the size. He, he just needs to be coached up a little bit. But let me remind, his ceiling is absurd. Marius Mims, to me, I think he's going to go top 15. I'll, I'll throw that flag down right now. The Chargers have pick number 14. I think it's a great fit. If you feel better about it, you can think about it as J.C. Latham here at pick number 14. But I'm going to go Marius Mims. Let's say the Chargers do trade down a little bit further and J.C.'s not on the board or whatever. Um... I think Mims would be a great value, and I think that he would be an awesome uh, fit for the charge. And again, don't worry about Fuanga being there and, and these other guys. We're trying to go for variety, a little bit of realism. Okay, so now we can look for a little bit of value here. The Chargers in the second round, of which we have two now. Where's our second one? I pick 45. We've got a little bit of flexibility. And again, like we've been talking about, flexibility versus realism. There's some guys here that I don't think... Maybe have like a coin flip chance of being here in the second round. In Lad McConkey, TJ Tampa. In this situation, the Chargers do have two second round picks. So I have to think about who's going to still be available here in round pick number 45. Okay. Jatavian Sanders is a guy that I'd normally never draft. But I mean, if we have two second round picks, I got to think about it. Pearsall is a guy I don't draft a lot, but if we have two second round picks, I got to think about it. Roman Wilson would be such a great fit for this for this offense as well. Um, McConkey now, but I also have to think about because I'm, I'm leaning towards TJ Tampa if I'm being honest, but I also have to think about the other corners that could be available here. I think this is one of our last shots and Leggett would be such a slam dunk pick here as well. 
that's wide receiver one. Okay, I think in terms of position, okay, I, I'm going to go TJ Tampa. This is an outside corner, one of the last, you know, fringe first round guys that I think is a year one impact. He's got the size and speed on the outside. Um, I, he's he's great in coverage, right? He's pretty physical. Like, I like the dude all around. I think he would main, uh, make a very, very solid Chargers cornerback one two three whatever he would be an instant year one impact and it's one of the last guys i feel confident about that in his position group right now it's a value in the second round we're going to take him and we're going to try and find some weapons for justin herbert uh, with some of the extra capital that we picked up along the way our second second round pick offers some insane uh, uh names still on the board and i was hoping that leggett would fall to us here at 45 it didn't happen um same we're still off the board we don't need corner anymore this is where we start wondering okay where are we going to find some value? Um, Braden Fisk could be a value. This is a nasty quarterback devouring machine from the interior. Highly considering that. Roman Wilson. I talk up a lot of McConkey in, in my videos. Okay, He's one of my favorite players in this draft because of his separation. Roman Wilson and him are pretty neck and neck in terms of that trait. You need a guy that's going to be available to his quarterback. And in terms of availability getting open separation roman wilson's as good as it gets sure he is a slot receiver he is but he is probably still one of the best in this draft pure saw to me you could convince me that he could be an outside guy a little bit you can convince me that he could be wide receiver run you know savvy route runner but i think roman wilson in terms of what this offense needs kind of a home run sanders is very interesting to me Jonathan Brooks could be the man of the people in the future. Chris Jenkins is such a good pick here, too. I never see him. But Roman Wilson in any other mock draft is probably a late first rounder, and he would be so, so good in this offense. I got to take him here. It, it was a kind of a mixed bag between Frazier, Fisk, and, and Wilson, but I'm going to take Wilson here. Never get to draft him. We have two first rounders. I love him in this offense. Now in the third round, this could happen. Jonathan Brooks could still be available in the third round. That would be absolutely insane. Now, Jonathan Brooks, to me, it's a it. A lot of people think that you know, oh, you're such a huge Trey Will or uh, um, Trey Benson guy that you completely overlook Brooks. Yes, I'm a big Trey Benson guy, and I think in the end, Trey Benson to me is still RB one in this class. He's just so freaking amazing. But Jonathan Brooks is no slouch either. He just has injury flags around him. This dude is as crafted to be an RB1, like a traditional RB1 as anybody in the draft. His availability, is, I don't know, if, I think he could be available in the third round. We'd have to wait and see. Other guys at a value that I love, Cooper, Haynes, uh, Colson. These are guys to very much so pay attention to. Um, the Chargers in this instance, Phillips is great here too. I think for a bit of variety, I want to go Brooks, but I'm I'm probably going to go Edger and Cooper. Uh, a lot for the same reasons. I think in mock draft day I talked about, right, with Junior Colson. Edron Cooper, to me, is, is better than than Junior Colson for a couple of different reasons. Does he slip into the third round? I don't think so, but again, it's a mix of value and realism. We've been pretty real the last couple of picks. I'm going to take a little bit of value here. I think Edron Cooper could be that leader on the defense that we need, and again, a position that I think is sneaking up on a lot of Chargers fans like, oh my God, I didn't know it was this important. It is very, very important. All right, in round four, the Chargers, did we end up picking an extra fourth? I think we actually picked up an extra fifth rounder, right? Uh, the Chargers are going to end up taking two selections here. There's a couple of guys still available. Um, and we got a pretty well-rounded you know, uh, list of guys so far. Michael Hall still there. A little bit of a dip. Actually, not too far without it, outside of his range. This could be a de definitely not a bad dude in terms of you know, kind of another guy to get to the quarterback from the interior. Um, maybe not the biggest size on him. But you add him to the equation with Morgan Fox and those guys on the inside, it's definitely not a bad idea. Ray Davis, one of my favorite running backs in the draft. Marshawn Lloyd, one of my favorite running backs in the draft. Cade Stover, we still need a tight end. Did we take Stover in the last one? No, we did not. Oh, that's tempting. Okay, in this instance, I'm going to go running back to start things off. Um... Because I'm so high on both these guys, Ray Davis and Marshawn Lloyd. I think Davis, we're going to go that that uh, compliment, right? The change of, of pace kind of guy in this draft. We're going to take Ray Davis, who's all around a fantastic running back. He's going to bring some of that Eckler 
you know, uh, nonsense to the passing game as well. He's a fantastic receiving back. Um, needs a little bit of work in a couple of different areas, but my goodness, he is as complete as a, of a running back too as you're going to find in this draft. Great compliment to Gus Edwards. And then at pick 110, which again, kind of kills me. I, I do want to go Marshawn Lloyd. Um, there's a couple of corners in here I still like. Audric Estime could definitely still be the guy at running back if Jim Harbaugh's going to have his way. Um, but we're going to go Cade Stover here, who to me has one of the best floors that you're going to find in this range at tight end. He'll be a solid weapon for Justin Herbert. He'll be a decent blocker for Jim Harbaugh. I think all around, that's a nice value that you're going to find uh, in the fourth round at tight end. You can convince me of Senate. You can convince me of Johnson. Um, but I think Stover to me is probably one of the safer guys to take in that range. And then finally here um, at pick 140, do we have another one in this round? With that trade, I thought we did. Either way, um, in this round, who do I still like? Here, this is kind of getting to the weeds of of the guys that I'm familiar with. Taj Washington. It's a little high to take him. Ah, uh, but that's another slot guy. Him and Roman Wilson. They're just both so good. Taj can play a little on the outside too, or is he strictly a slot dude? I think in the NFL he'll be strictly kind of a slot guy, but he's so exciting to think about. Ah, oh, wide receiver four or five. I think he could play. I think he could play. I think honestly, it's a guy that I'm considering. Kalen King's not bad, but Kai Wingo's a dude that I'm always looking at. Again, another guy in the interior that I like in terms of uh, run. The this guy's a little bit more complete. I would say he'd be a nice rotational guy in there. Um, oh my God, you guys are gonna have to forgive me. I need to go back and make sure we took Ray Davis. That's right. Okay. So in terms of this pick, Edgerin Cooper. And Roman Wilson. I think in terms of this pick, we're going to go defensive line. And we're going to end up taking Makai Wingo. I like this guy. The Christian Boy, too. I need to look a little bit more into him. Some people really love him. He graded out very, very nice. I just don't know much about him. I do know Makai Wingo, though. He would be an awesome pick here. Other guys that we might be passing up on in terms of value? Uh, I think, yeah, this could be the pick. I will go uh, Makai Wingo in uh, round five and then we have one more fifth round pick again we're kind of in the weeds here but Trake Nugent actually kind of works out for us here this is a guy that again you can be a backup center for right now there's a couple of guys that I think will really work out in this range of center let's see uh uh offensive interior offensive line here there's a couple of guys that I think will work out very nicely in terms of center Norzad's still there he may end up being a better pick if I'm being honest but let's just go with the Michigan guy we need a center that's definitely not a bad idea. Here's mock draft B. Okay, a bit of a longer video, but pretty important emphasis we're trying to make in this one. And again, here's another trade down. The Chargers, mind you, next season also have an extra first and an extra second. This is kind of a nice little get right here. Mims, Tampa, Wilson, Cooper, Davis, Stover, Wingo, and Nugent. Like, feels pretty solid to me. All right. To round out this video, which is getting way too long at this point, but one that, again, holds so much value in terms of perspective. We need to understand what we're getting ourselves into if we go offensive line in the first round. Mock draft B, or should I say mock draft C at this point, is going to feature something that the Chargers and its fans have been trying to avoid. I should say the Chargers fans have been trying to avoid in our minds for a little bit here. Let's go ahead and start the draft. Marvin Harrison off the board. The quarterbacks actually kind of fell the way I was. This is actually the most accurate um, depiction of what I think is going to happen in the first four picks above us. So this really paints a good picture for a scenario that Joe Alt could be off the board to the Chargers at five okay and a lot of people aren't super duper about this but let me let me paint a picture for you guys okay marvin harrison jr is off the board he's a generational wide receiver right he's as sure of a thing at wide receiver as we've seen come through the draft malik neighbors is as exciting of a prospect as we've ever seen um come through the draft and he's available to chargers here at pick number five joe all also fits in that category joe alt is as good of a tackle as we've ever seen come through the draft he is a freak show he's a freak of nature he's one of the most complete guys i've ever seen in terms of what he creates for his offense not just in terms of pass protection which he's one of the best maybe the best you'll see in this class but in run uh, blocking as well he's absolutely bonkers the one thing that i'm a little bit shaky on that some people are shaking on is his transition to right tackle because of course uh of course he didn't play any right tackle graded maybe looked a little bit underwhelming in some of those right tackle drills in the combine yes that concerns me a little bit but you have to take the pros and the cons right the con ah he doesn't play right tackle there's a little bit of question marks here the pros this man's going into a jim harbaugh greg roman offense that is one of the biggest benefits any tackle could find in this entire like in in this entire NFL. 
That is a situation where Joe Alt goes from holy crap to this man is maybe the best right tackle in the league. The potential is there. And what Joe Alt does for your offense is absurd. There's there's very few tackles in the league that could do what Joe Alt is going to do for the team that he gets drafted by. He's a, he's a, he's a monster. And he's a Jim Harbaugh dude. And not everybody agrees with this. I think there would be, you know, there would be some pushback from the fans if we decided to go Joe Alt over Malik Neighbors, but it could be the case and that's why this video is being made today. All right? So, we went with the realism in round one. We are allowed to take some some value in round two if we so choose to do so, okay? In this instance as well, if the Chargers stick and pick in the first round, I would say our chances of trading down in the second round are pretty high, okay? And, but there's some guys in here. There's no TJ Tampa this time, but I do see some value. And you know what? We're going to be a little bit selfish here. I don't know. Again, coin flip if McConkie is there, but McConkie is one of my personal favorite wide receivers in this draft. The dude is just, he's there for his quarterback. When the quarterback's in trouble, there's McConkey. And you know what? Justin Herbert's had that for his entire career in the NFL with Keenan Allen. I hate that we moved on from Keenan. I hate it. I wanted him back with the Chargers on this run it back with Jim Harbaugh. I wanted him to be part of the Jim Harbaugh team. Huge fan of, of Keenan. Don't make me emotional, Bolt fam. But I'm also a huge fan of Justin Herbert, and he deserves a weapon like that. And McConkey is as good as anybody in this draft that's going to bring that element to his team. McConkie's going to be there for his quarterback. McConkie is going to get open. McConkie's not going to be that big play guy on the sideline, but boy howdy, is he going to move the chains over and over and over again for his QB. I'm taking McConkie in the second round. We're getting ourselves a value here, and he could end up being Chargers wide receiver one even this season, which is nuts. It's nuts to think about, but he's a special guy to me. Round three, Chris Jenkins off the board right before us. Ouch. Um, but we got some opportunities here, dude. Like this, this would be nuts. Christian Haynes to the Chargers in round three. I don't know if we can do it. I don't think he makes it here to us in round three. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. The Chargers still do, do though, have a need at cornerback that we have yet to hit on. We went tackle. We went receiver. Corner still kind of a big thing for me. There's a couple of Oregon guys on the board that I love. Okay. Kyrie Jackson. I will say I'm a little bit shaken. If Junior Colson and Kyrie Jackson on the board, I'm taking Colson 10 out of 10 times, but let's go ahead and pretend that these are some of the guys still available here in the third round. Um, in terms of value, it's Tavondre Sweat, but he's got some flags behind him. Um, Kyrie Jackson, to me, probably has to end up being the pick. He's a little, I'm not going to say raw, maybe he is, but he needs some work. He needs some coaching. What he does provide, however, is that rare size and speed at the position of quarter. Six foot three. Uh, almost 200 pounds, so he's no he's no stick, you know, out there. He's no like you know fragile player out there. He's also very very physical. Love what this dude brings to the run defense. He he probably needs a little bit more coaching up there, but the dude's not afraid to take contact. Um, very very well rounded. I would just say you know he, he needs some work in his coverage a little bit too, but just feels like. The next thing for the Chargers at outside corner when it comes to size, when it comes to speed, when it comes to physicality, he fits what Minter would be looking for in a corner. Um, and it's one that I think the Chargers could definitely coach up. You know what I mean? Over his time with the Chargers. We still have Asante out there. We probably end up going out there and getting another guy via free agency. But Kyrie's the kind of dude that I'm looking for in the third round if we still haven't gone cornerback in the draft. Chargers round four have two... Uh, uh, Two selections to make here. We got a couple of, again, guys that are reoccurring quite a bit. Um, guys that I love here. Gonsalves is kind of not needed. Uh, Eichenberg, a little slow. Uh, Cade Stover, another guy that gets me a little bit excited. I don't know, dude. In terms of this particular mock draft, the Chargers, we got our receiver. We got our corner. Uh, we got our tackle already. At this point, I'm kind of looking for some defensive guys. Dwayne Carter kind of grabs my attention a little bit. He's kind of well-rounded. Um, kind of reminds me of a lot where the Chargers already have on that line, though. We could go uh, running back. There's some guys that I like here. Trevor Keegan could be another guy that I think is slowly climbing for me. Um, of course, he's going to be a Harbaugh guy as well. And he is Smith. If you really want to round out that wide receiver room, he's another guy that I wouldn't mind double dipping at. Chargers have two picks here, though. Eric All is a guy that I'm seeing a lot lately drop. And he's a guy that I'm starting to wonder why. Like, what? He's a little bit older yet, 23 and a half. Um, don't know too much about him other than, you know, he could be a decent weapon in terms of, of uh, blocking and receiving for the Chargers. 
Tight end could be something that you convince me of here. And this point, though, did we already take Bo Limmer once? We did. I, it it kind of feels like the move here. Chargers need a center. I was really hoping in this in this particular mock draft that um, Cedric Van Pran would still be there. Or is he one that we look for in the third? Either way, he's not here. Um, I'm going to take one more look at the interior offensive line. Keegan, Zinter's not bad. Nugent's not bad. Norzad would be a very good selection, too. Limmer just kind of feels like the pick. We also need defensive line, too, though. Dwayne Carter's not bad. Dwayne Carter's not bad. And we need defensive line. Leonard Taylor's actually not bad as well, but we're gonna we're actually just gonna do it. Let's go Dwayne Carter. Let's go Dwayne Carter, defensive line. Kind of need a guy. Top of the fourth round. Don't know if he makes it any further than that. And then here in round four, pick number two. This is generally where I like to go running back. Marshawn Lloyd's still on the table. Audric Estime feels like a Harbaugh dude. Oh, this is tough, man. I'm going to shock everybody. I'm going to go double dipping on wide receiver. Malik Washington's going to be my pick. This dude is super explosive from the slot. Um, it keeps, you know, uh, 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 McConkey available to move around a little bit. But Malik Washington does bring that explosiveness that we were kind of hoping to get with Malik Neighbors, but more at a value. Okay, now let's be clear. He's not going to be this huge superstar kind of guy like Neighbors is, but Washington would be one heck of a weapon in this offense in particular. Um, we've already gone to Neas Will, uh, Smith once, right? Yeah, so I'm going to say Washington here. We're going to double dip at receiver for the first time in this mock draft. And all of a sudden, the Chargers with McConkey, Washington. Of course, you still got guys like uh, Josh Palmer and Quinton Johnson. The wide receiver room looking a lot better. And then finally in round five, for the sake of variety, we're going to take that complimentary back. We already took Allen once. Will Shipley to me. If you want a guy that's going to kick it to the outside, he's got some crazy speed. He ran, what, a 4-3-3? Four, 4-3-4? Three, three, four, three, four? Very fast dude. Um, with also some great upside as a receiving back. This dude's as good of, as a receiver as he is a runner. So I think we're going to grab some variety here and feel pretty dang good about mock draft C. So here you guys go. Again, try to have an open mind with this whole thing. I still think personally that the Chargers end up going receiver at five if Marvin Harrison or Malik Neighbors is there. That still feels like the move to me. However, something like this could easily happen. The Chargers get an offer that they can't refuse. We end up grabbing some studs in our lines here in mock draft a we grab some michigan guys we grab some you know uh, value at the tail end and braylon allen and anaya smith love that let me know if you guys think of draft mock draft a mock draft b the chargers with a surprise trade down because again i still think you're going to try and grab some value uh find a trade partner in the saints Maybe some people see Amarius Mims as, as a bit of a reach. I think this is kind of where I think he's going to go, and I think he'd be great future right tackle for the Chargers. We get some value everywhere in TJ Tampa and Cooper. Stover. And, of course, we got a first round uh, next year and a second round next year to kind of complement that. And then finally, mock draft C, Chargers, the stick and pick mock draft. We go Joe Alt. Something that Chargers fans are a bit resistant behind, but look at the rest of this draft. Lad McConkey, wide receiver one. Kyrie Jackson, corner two. Dwayne Carter, nice rotational piece with our guys like Puna Ford. Malik Washington, slot wide receiver. Will Shipley, complimentary running back. Running back. I don't know. If there's one shared characteristic of all of these mock drafts, however, it's that they share the core values of what Jim Harbaugh has been winning with his entire career. Jim Harbaugh is a winner. He does things a certain way. It involves offensive linemen heavily. It involves a punchy in the face defense heavily. And these are things that his success needs to be respected around. Us as Chargers fans, it'll be tough if we pass on a wide receiver. It really will be. But if we end up with something, especially in a trade down situation like this, which I absolutely love, if we end up sticking and picking at Joe Walt, right, and find some value later, we need to respect the process, and it's still considered, to me at least, a huge dub. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me. This has been The Director. A long video today. I get it. But you know what? This is a conversation that I've been meaning to have with you guys for a while now. It's one that I've come into some clarity for myself, even. It's one that I feel is so important because, again, if draft day comes and this ends up being the situation, I want to help you guys feel comfortable with that decision. Because in the end, it's a good decision. Maybe not one that everybody agrees with, but it's the decision that's going to win us football games. All right? 
Well, guys, with that, thank you so much for joining me. This has been The Director. If you liked what you saw here, hit us up with a like and sub. Let me know your favorite mock draft in the comment section below. We'll catch you next time. And as always, bolt up and stay frosty. Joe Walt at five. It could happen. And still, guys, I got to tell you, I'll be honest, it's, it's still a dub.